Uh, good morning, my YouTube viewers. It's Crystal here. I'm just here because I wanted to make you another video. This particular video, we're going to be discussing the exponential distribution and how you can make an exponential distribution in Excel. And so the first thing that you need to do to have your exponential distribution is you need to have your input values. And so what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to use the formula ren between to have an input value between 1 and 10. And we're going to use that in uh, cells A3 to A18. So that'll give you about 15 cells that um, you can use it in. And so after you have input the eight, the 15, sorry, input the 15 values, then you want to get the mean of those values. So to get the mean of those 15 values, we're going to say 15. So 8, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, well, anyway, so it's going to be about 15 values, and um, and then we're, we're going to get the mean, and we're going to use the average for that. And so, basically, in, in Excel, the mean formula is actually average. So, we're going to find the average between A3 and A18, which in this instance is 5.3125. The STDs in there, but I don't know why. I think I borrowed that um, code from somebody else, and so the STD was in there. That's your standard deviation, uh, but you don't need it. We don't need the STD in this particular situation, even though it's in there. But your standard deviation, you're going to use the stdev.p formula for the 15 variables and um, I got it as being um, 13 variables so we're not going to worry about it too much and then you're going to after we do that you're going to have lambda now lambda is the reciprocal of the mean so the lambda is 1 over B20, and the lambda is actually what you're going to be using. And so if I wanted to be really sophisticated, uh, I could have just said lambda is 1 over the mean, but I decided to do a little bit more um, simplistic way to do it. But let's say hypothetically, you wanted to conserve your code and you didn't want to have a lot of code then you could have said lambda equals one over average of a3 to a18 so there we've got our input values our input values of A3 to A18 to um, the mean and the lambda. And the STD was in there, but we're not going to be using the STD. And I think what I had done was I had borrowed um, the, this page from something else and it was in there. So don't worry about the STD. You don't have to use the STD if you don't want to. And then because it's not going to be used. And then so, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the exponential distribution, the uh, probable probability distribution function. And so you're going to use the formula expon.dist and uh, with A3, and you're going to use the B22, which is an absolute reference and false, letting you know that it's PDF, PDF. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this 
formula and you're going to copy it down all the way down to A18 and that's going to give you your uh, exponential PDF that's probability distribution and function and so we're going to come over here to the the chart right here and what I have done is I have made a chart of exponential PDF using a scatter plot and so you can see what exponential PDF is based upon the values that we have in input into the system and now what you want to do is you want to check the exponential CDF which is cumulative distribution function and so what that does is that gives you a cumulative accumulation of all of the probabilities so we're going to use exactly the same formula that we had used for the PDF except instead of false we're going to say true so PDF is false and CDF is true and then we're going to copy that all the way down to A18 and then so you're going to get your CDF and then you can look here and this is your exponential CDF and what that looks like and uh, it's a it has to total one it has to give you an accumulation of one which is what it has done so what I want to do now is I want to show you how you can make your own graph with the exponential PDF and the exponential CDF. So what you do is you mark off all of the data that you want to use for the PDF and you come here you go to your input ribbon and then you go to recommended charts so we've already got the uh, scatter plot so let's just look at some other charts and see what we can if there's anything that we like let's come back here to the scatter chart So there's not really much of anything that we like. The only thing that we saw that we liked was the uh, the X Y scatter chart, and um, everything else doesn't really look good. You can try the waterfall and the box and whisker and the histogram, but it doesn't really look good. The only the only thing that I see that um, that looks decent is this one right here, this one right here, and that's the one that we have already done. And all of the other charts don't look good. It don't look the way we want it to look. So the only acceptable chart is the X Y scatter chart which we already have but you can also go over here to the CDF see if there's another chart on the CDF you mark off all of the data that you want covered in the insert ribbon and then again so this doesn't look great to me um, doesn't really look great to me the only thing that looks decent and looks the way we want it to look is the XY scatter chart but you can see that the XY scatter chart there is one I mean you can use the the large baubles if you want to use the large baubles so we'll just use the large baubles just for this experiment so in this one we've got two charts two XY scatter charts that we saw that are acceptable and we only had one 
XY scatter chart for the PDF that we saw that was acceptable. But this will just give you an idea how to make your own charts. And, um, and that's about it really. I'm sorry I was a bit tongue-tied on this. Um, but you don't need um you don't you don't need the STD that was just put in there. The only thing that you really need is so the only thing that you really need is the mean and the reciprocal of the mean. So what we could do here is we can uh hmm. Because it doesn't, you don't need it. The only thing that you need is you need B22. And your mean is 5.625. And your lambda is 1 over B20. But we can move that. And you can see that it didn't make any difference at all. And the reason why that is, is because you don't use your STD, and we corrected that. And let's just say, hypothetically, hypothetically, you want, um, Okay, so that's just like, that's your lambda is 1 over the average A3 to A18. And then you don't even need your mean because your lambda your lambda is um, the reciprocal of the mean. So that was just, I was just tidying up the uh, formula a little bit just to let you know how you do it. And um, so we've got B21 and we've got over here B21. And so, so that's it. And so now what we've done is, is we tidied it up so you don't even need the um, mean because we put the mean in there. The, and then we put we, we remove the standard deviation because you don't need that, and we've just got the lambda, which is the reciprocal of the mean. So there you go. So sorry, I'm a bit tongue tied. It's in the middle of the night, and maybe my brain isn't engaging with my tongue as well as it could, and it also fluxed with me a little bit having the standard deviation in there when you didn't need that. But we have corrected it. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to making another video for you in the future.